Welcome to the Mount of Olives. Located on the east side of the old city of Jerusalem, the Mount of Olives was once covered with olive trees, but is now home to over a dozen churches, at least 150,000 tombs, and the Palestinian neighborhood of Atpur. So what is so special about this 2,600 foot mountain? The Bible mentions several moments that took place here, both in the Old and New Testaments. Did you know that there is also a future event prophesied to occur right here on top of the mountain? Let's take a look. In 2 Samuel chapter 15, King David flees Jerusalem as his son Absalom was leading an insurrection against him. But David continued up the Mount of Olives, weeping as he went. His head was covered and he was barefoot. All the people with him covered their heads too and were weeping as they went up. In 1 Kings chapter 11, David's son and successor, King Solomon, in his old age builds places of worship for false gods. On a hill east of Jerusalem, Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the detestable god of Moab, and for Moloch, the detestable god of the Ammonites. Though known for his great wisdom, King Solomon was led astray by many of his foreign wives to worship other gods. Which brings up a question we all need to answer. Are there people in our lives drawing us away from having a close relationship with Jesus? If so, we probably need to cut them out of our lives. Now in the New Testament, we know Jesus frequently went to the Mount of Olives. Jesus went up, as usual, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. In Luke chapter 19, prior to Jesus' triumphal entry, as he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. This was the fulfillment of prophecy found in Zechariah chapter 9, which says, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. In Matthew chapter 24 and 25, we find Jesus' Olivet Discourse, where he describes the destruction of Jerusalem, the tribulation, and his second coming. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Now, at the base of the Mount of Olives is the Garden of Gethsemane. So in Matthew chapter 26, after the Last Supper ended, when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. In the rest of Matthew chapter 26, we see that this is where Jesus predicts Peter's denial, where Jesus famously prayed in the garden and was later arrested. In Acts chapter 1, Luke describes when Jesus ascended into heaven and the promise of his return. After he said this, talking about Jesus, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. So why all of these graves along the Mount of Olives? It's because of the prophecy from Zechariah that describes what will happen here in the future. Then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations as he fights on the day of battle. On that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives east of Jerusalem, and the Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west, forming a great valley with half the mountain moving north and half moving south. This is describing when Jesus returns. But since the majority of Jews do not believe Jesus was the Messiah, as of yet, they take this scripture to mean when the Messiah first arrives, he will touch down on the Mount of Olives and the dead will be resurrected. This resurrection of the dead we find mentioned in the book of Daniel as he describes the conclusion of the end times. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. So, what better place to be buried than near the spot where the Messiah arrives? The cemetery, which is 3,000 years old, contains at least 150,000 tombs and is considered to be the largest Jewish cemetery on earth. Now, you see many of these tombs have rocks on top of them. It is an ancient Jewish custom that doesn't have a definitive answer as to why it started. One reason proposed was to warn Jewish priests that there is a dead body inside, so they would not go near it and get defiled. Another reason proposed is to keep the souls of the person inside and still here on earth. Perhaps this would give comfort to the loved ones still alive, but seems a little selfish to me on their part. And the most likely reason is the stones are a lasting memorial to honor the deceased each time loved ones visit as opposed to using flowers, which die quickly. When we first arrived in Jerusalem, the first place they took us to was the Mount of Olives to get a look at the old city, which is beautiful. 
but towards the end of my time in Israel, I decided to walk 40 minutes from the hotel and climb up the Mount of Olives to get a nighttime shot of the city. Now, I say climb because it wasn't a traditional hike up a mountain. It was more of a walk up steep roads. But to me, it was well worth it. This concludes my review of the Mount of Olives. In my next review, I will discuss the Kidron Valley, which is in between the Mount of Olives and the Old City of Jerusalem. But until then, thank you for watching, and as always, God bless. Thank you.